Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. So I'm going to give you 10 of Manchester United's best players this week. Now, I think Scott McTominay, he's been one of our best players. Um, got to give McTominay a lot of credit, I thought he did very, very well in the PSG game. He kept the ball well, he cut out the passes, cut out the runs. And I know that I've been critical of Scott McTominay before. Was it just after the first lockdown, McTominay had signed a five-year contract with Manchester United and he's been part of the club for several years. Um, another one of our best players has been Fred. Same sort of thing of what I've just said regarding McTominay. Um, I thought Fred was very, very good against PSG. And I think, you know, Fred has really, really improved under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. Obviously, Fred has been subjected to transfer speculation. Uh, Fred has got a contract with Man United until 2023. He has been at the club a few years. Uh, we paid £52 million for him from Shakhtar Donetsk. Um, he was absolutely exceptional in Ukraine. Another one of our best players has been Juan Mata. Juan Mata obviously didn't play against PSG, but he was very, very good in the Newcastle game. Uh, obviously, you know, got an assist. His hold-up play was very, very good. And Juan Mata has enjoyed a very, very good start to the season. Um, he got manned the match for both of our games in the Cowbell Cup against Luton and Brighton. Juan Mata has enjoyed a good six years or so now at Manchester United. He scored 50 goals in 258 appearances in all competitions. We paid just under £40 million for him from Chelsea back in 2014. Juan Mata doesn't play regularly now, obviously. He has lost that yard of pace because he is now in his 30s, but he does make an impact when he gets his chances. Uh, the other week, he rejected an 18 million a year contract offer to play in Sergio Arabia. <coughs> now, another one of our best players has been Anwan Pesaka. Anwan Pesaka has done very, very well in his last two games. He did very, very well against PSG, made some very, very good tackles, also showed some good attacking intent. He did well in the Newcastle game. He scored in the Newcastle game. That was his first goal for Manchester United and it was his 50th appearance against Newcastle. Prior to two games, though, didn't enjoy the best of starts to the season. Uh, this is Anwan Bissaka's second season at Manchester United. Obviously, we got him in a deal worth £50 million from Crystal Palace last summer. Um, I think another one of our best players has been David De Gea. David De Gea has been really, really good in his last two games, so it's good that he has rejuvenated himself. De Gea made some very, very good saves in the PSG game to deny Mbappe, Kurt Sawa and Angel Di Maria. And he also made some good saves in the Newcastle game. Like I said to you, David De Gea will remain our number one this season. But David De Gea has been long serving at Manchester United. This is his 10th season at the football club. He has made over 400 appearances in all competitions and over 300 appearances in the Premier League. You know, he has won everything domestically at the football club, obviously, and he's won individual awards. Won some Matt Busby Player of the Year award quite a few times. Uh, when David De Gea does leave Manchester United, he will go back to Spain. I know I've been critical of him because in the last couple of years, he has made a lot of calamitous mistakes. Um, I think another one of our best players has been Victor Lindelof. I think Victor Lindelof has improved recently. You know, he's obviously not a world-class centre-half. 
Lindelof had, Lindelof's had some good periods as a Man United player. He's also had some bad periods. Obviously, he's endured around three years or so at the football club. Got him for around £31 million from Benfica back in 2017. Um, another one of our best players has been Marcus Rashford. Uh, Rashford, of course, was the hero in Paris recently. He scored the winner, second time he scored the winner in Paris. Uh, Rashford, don't forget, got two assists in the Newcastle game and also got his name on the score sheet in the Newcastle game last week. I said anyway, Rashford's really, really improved under the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer era. You know, Marcus Rashford has been part of the club for several years. You know, he's now 22, he's nearly 23, but he's been a United player since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016 and since then has become an integral part of our team. He's had a few injuries, hasn't he? You know, before the start of the season, he had that ankle injury. Obviously had that back injury last season when he was out for a few months. I think another one of our best players has been Bruno Fernandes. Bruno Fernandes obviously was the captain in Paris. Uh, the main explanation we give him the captaincy because Harry Maguire wasn't available. I've already said, you know, we should give Bruno Fernandes the captaincy permanently because he shows fantastic leadership in the team. Um, he did score in the PSG game from the penalty spot. Well, obviously he missed the first penalty, but obviously it had to be retaken, then he scored it. A lot of Bruno Fernandes' goals have come from the penalty spot. Um, obviously in the game against Newcastle, Bruno Fernandes scored, also got an assist and had a goal disallowed and also missed a penalty against Newcastle. Bruno Fernandes has enjoyed around nine months or so at the football club. And reflects on his good performances. He won some Matt Busby Player of the Year award. He's won Premier League Player of the Month around three times. Reflects on his good performances. Uh, obviously, Ollie's back in Bruno. Uh, don't forget there was reports coming out a few weeks ago saying that Bruno Fernandez had lost faith in Solskjaer and he was demanding him out of the football club. And it says Bruno Fernandez was infuriated with the board over the lack of signings and all of that. But yeah, Bruno Fernandes did deny that he had a bust-up. Um, I think also, too, Luke Shaw um, has had a pretty good week. Uh, I don't think Luke Shaw was too bad in the PSG game. And to be honest with you, I don't think he was too bad in the Newcastle game. Luke Shaw looks very effective, effective as, a, as a left centre-half. Uh, Luke Shaw's obviously enjoyed a good six years or so now at Manchester United. Obviously, we got him from Southampton back in 2014 for around £30 million. My only element of concern about him, he is injury prone. So I've got to say, they have I said that I think they're ten players I've said, or close to ten. So I think they've been our best players this week. Now, massive game for Manchester United today, going up against Chelsea at Old Trafford. Uh, our squad has been revealed, by the way. Um, Edison Cavani, Harry Maguire. And Mason Greenwood are available. So yeah, look, looking like Edison Cavani is going to be making his debut for the club. It'll be also good to see Mason Greenwood back in action because he hasn't played in the last two games. Uh, don't forget Solskjaer recently defended Mason Greenwood and blasts our ex-players for criticising him. And he says the English media are starting to go after him. And Solskjaer denied that. Mason Greenwood's timekeeping was poor. 
We had a few issues with Mason Greenwood before the start of the season, though, didn't we? He did confirm at the start of the season that we'll give him the number 11. He's the fourth Manchester United player to wear the number 11 shirt. And uh, Harry Maguire, I think he's recently been out with injury. He obviously, no, didn't travel to Paris. He did play in the Newcastle game, though, and I thought he did very, very well in the Newcastle game. Obviously got his name on the score sheet. But Solskjaer was saying prior to the Newcastle game that he was backing Harry Maguire to bounce back from his early season troubles. Because don't forget, Harry Maguire sustained the knocking. England's 1-0 defeat to Denmark. He got sent off in the England-Denmark game and he had he had that incident in Greece the other month. As it stands at the moment, Harry Maguire is the second most expensive sign at the club and the most expensive centre-half in the world because we got him in a deal worth £80 million. Pounds. We obviously know that Eric Bay is unavailable. He's out for three to four weeks with a... Muscle injury, and that's my element of concern about Eric Bay. He is too injury prone, but I think prior to that, he's a very, very good centre half. Uh, Bay also sustained a hamstring injury whilst whilst he was out on international duty with the Ivory Coast. Uh, Bay's endured around four years or so at Manchester United. Got him from Villarreal back in twenty sixteen for thirty million pounds. Uh, Anthony Martial, as you all know, is unavailable because um, he's suspended. He got sent off in our 6-1 defeat to Tottenham. Shouldn't have been sent off, but did get sent off. He's now got two games to serve in the league. So he's going to miss today's game and he's going to miss the Arsenal game. Uh, Martial hasn't enjoyed the best of starts to the season, has he? Um, I thought it was exceptional last season, though, under Solskjaer. He was also very good in his debut season under the Louis van Gaal era. Uh, Martial's enjoyed a good five years or so at Manchester United. Uh, like I've said to you, I'm expecting Axel Tuanzebe to start today. He deserves another chance because he was absolutely exceptional against PSG. Uh, that game against PSG was his first start in 10 months. And Solskjaer has challenged Axel Tuanzebe to add consistency, to ensure that he has a long career at Man United and obviously he's got to stay injury-free because he has sustained quite a few injuries as Axel Tuanzebe. So he should be um, alongside Maguire in our back line, shouldn't he? Um, like I said, I'm, ex I'm expecting Alex Tellez to be making his Premier League debut for the club. Alex Tellez was very, very good on his debut against PSG. Obviously it wasn't the best play, but he still did well. You know, He made some good runs on that left flank. He was good from set pieces, put some good crosses into the box. And we expect to see more from Alex Tellez. We got Alex Tellez for just over £15 million, pounds, didn't we? Uh, with add-ons included. And Tellez signed a four-year contract with the club with an option of a further year. Um, I'm not expecting Donny van der Beek to start. Uh, he'll probably come off the bench. Uh, Solskjaer uh, was talking about Donny van der Beek's lack of playing time yesterday in his press conference and obviously you know, he said that he's still settling in and he needs to adapt. Um, I think Solskjaer's thinking about what position to put him in you know, because he can play in like three different roles but he's predominantly a box-to-box -box midfielder is Donny van der Beek but I'm surprised he's not yet made his full debut for the football club. Donny van der Beek's enjoyed a fantastic start, though, to his Manchester United career. You know what I mean? He's enjoyed a fantastic start. Um, some United fans um, are expecting Paul Pogba to be uh, dropped. But some United fans will say we maybe should start Paul Popper because Paul Popper hasn't started our last two games, but obviously he has come off the bench. You know, obviously if it were if it were, if we were to pick between Popper and Fernandez, obviously you know it would be Fernandez over Popper. You know, in that attacking role. Uh, you obviously know the news already regarding Paul Popper. Um, I give you the news on him yesterday, didn't I? Uh, Man United have rejected Paul Pogba's new deal. Obviously, 
with Warmpole, Popper, that we will not break our wage structure to keep him at Old Trafford, so won't give him what you know Alexis Sanchez was on. We are willing, we are happy to give him a new long term contract. You know, we're willing to give him a pay rise, but we'll just obviously you know won't make him our highest pay player probably. As it stands at the moment, Popper's on two hundred ninety grand a week. Uh, we recently triggered that one year extension on Paul Popper's contract, so that keeps him at the football club until June twenty twenty two, and this was recently confirmed by Fabrizio Romano. Um, I, th I'm, I think there's a good chance Popper could leave next summer because a few weeks ago he made an admission saying that his dream is to join Real Madrid one day. He said last year that he wanted to leave Man United because he was seeking for a new challenge. Uh, Juventus have been in for him, his former club. Uh, Mundo Deportivo have said that Barcelona are interested in Pogba. You know, this is Paul Pogba's fifth season at the club since he rejoined from Juventus back in 2016. As it stands at the moment, Pogba's our most expensive signing because we paid £8 to £9 million pounds for him, didn't we? You know, like I said, you know, Rashford will obviously play. Uh, Matter could be involved as well. You know, if Matter does play this evening, he will be reuniting with his former club, Chelsea. Uh, Matic probably won't start. Uh, Matic has uh, lost his place in the team now, hasn't he? Don't forget. Uh, and Wam will obviously keep his players um, on the right hand side. You know. Uh, by the way, Facundo Palistri, I think I mentioned it uh, on one of my other videos, uh, made, made his first appearance for Manchester United yesterday for the under 23s. We got Facundo Palistri for, nine, for around £9 million from Peniril. He signed a five year contract with a football club. Uh, with an option of a further year. Solskjaer sees him as more of the future, like he said in one of his recent press conferences. It was the one before Chelsea. Also, to Rojo and Brandon Williams played for the under-23s yesterday. By the way, Man United did win by two goals to one against Everton. And this evening, what formation do you think Solskjaer is going to go with? You know... Do you think we should stick with three at the back? We look we look very effective with three at the back. Or should we go with a 4-3-3? Uh, should we go with a 4-2-3-1? To be fair, since Solskjaer got appointed in, you know, he has gone a lot with that 4-2-3-1 formation. But we win this game this evening against Chelsea. It will be our first home win of the season. And it will be our third win in a row in all competitions because we have won our last two games. Like I said to you, uh, we played Chelsea four times last season. Uh, we've beaten them 4-0 on the opening day of last season. We've beaten them 2-1 in the Cowbell Cup at Stamford Bridge and we've beaten them 2-0 away at Stamford Bridge in the league. And then obviously, you know, Chelsea beat us in the FA Cup semi-final 3-1. That was the recent meeting. So Solskjaer's beaten Frank Lampard three times as a manager and Lampard's beaten Solskjaer once. Obviously, we've got to address our home form. Um, we've lost both our games at home this season in the league. Obviously, we lost our opening game against Crystal Palace by three goals to one. And we also lost to Tottenham by six goals to one before the international break. But you know what? Away from home, we've been absolutely exceptional. We haven't lost any away game in any competition since January. And another thing that's very beneficial, Solskjaer's record against the top six sides has been very, very good since he got appointed in as Manchester United manager. But yeah, this will be this will be tough. Uh Chelsea haven't had the best of starts to the season. Season, You know, they're sitting eighth in the Premier League. You'd have thought they'd have been in much more of a commanding position, you know, reflecting on the signings that they made in the summer transfer window. Chelsea spent over £200 million. Obviously, they brought Ziyech in. Oh, they brought Ziyech in in February, didn't they? Uh, but in the summer transfer window, they brought Werner in. They brought Ben Chirwell in, Kai Havertz, Milan Saar, Thiago Silva, Mendy. You know, Chelsea have also got other good players in their team, like I've already mentioned. 
But so far, you know, Chelsea have beaten Palace, beaten Brighton, drew with West Brom 3-3, lost to Liverpool, got knocked out of the Carabao Cup against Tottenham and recently drew with Sevilla. Didn't there? Obviously, Frank Lampard is in his second season as Chelsea manager. Uh, reflects on how long he's been at Chelsea now. He has gained managerial experience, but obviously he hasn't got a proven pedigree, you know, just like Solskjaer. But, you know, Frank Lampard was a great player for Chelsea. You know, he enjoyed 13 good years with them and he's their all-time leading goal scorer with 211 goals. And I said the same thing about Solskjaer. You know, he was a very, very good player for us for 11 years. <laughs> Uh, Frank Lampard began his managerial career with Derby, didn't he? But yeah, um, we've got a very, very tough period. You know, Chelsea this evening, then it's RP Leisbig in the Champions League. That's our second game in the group. Then after Leisbig, Arsenal, that's another tough game. Then Istanbul, Bissachia, I think. And then it's Everton, you know. So, reflect on the last two wins, you know, the pressure has eased off Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because before them two games, uh, Solskjaer, you know, was under serious pressure at the football club and he was close to getting sacked by Manchester United. If we hadn't have beaten Newcastle, I think Solskjaer would have been sacked as Manchester United manager. And obviously, um, a few weeks ago, there was talks of Mauricio Pochettino coming in, and there was also talks, you know, of Masmiliano Allegri. Well, we was looking at Masmiliano Allegri as an alternative to Pochettino. But like I said a few weeks ago, before we got the wins against Newcastle and PSG, Solskjaer was in the exact same position as what he was in at the first part of last season, because at the first part of last season, we enjoyed our worst start ever to a Premier League season. Now, obviously, if we lose to Chelsea this evening, then maybe the pressure's going to be back on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, then you're going to have more Manchester United fans demanding him out of the football club. But it seems to me, every time he's under pressure, he seems to tactically get it right. Because, to be honest with you, in a lot of Solskjaer's games at Manchester United, he's been very tactically naive he really really has I still can't give you enough of a perception on him yet obviously you know I have been critical of him and I've demanded him out a few times but I just think he deserves more time you know if we did sack him you know it wouldn't really solve a lot let's be honest because not all of the blame stemmed from him anyway you know it hasn't like I said to you know Solskjaer wasn't backed enough in that summer transfer window he really, really wasn't, that's enough. Because we missed out on all of his priority targets and we missed out on a lot of targets in general. I don't think any of the managers that we've had since Ferguson retired have been backed enough. You know, Moyes wasn't backed enough, Van Aar wasn't backed enough, Mourinho wasn't backed enough and Solskjaer wasn't backed enough. But Ed Woodward's recently come out with a lengthy statement saying that he's now backing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And Solskjaer does need to be backed in the January transfer window because next year we'll be obviously looking to make a couple of more signings. We'll be obviously you know, looking to offload more players. That's another one because I still think there is uh, some deadwood at the football club. Uh, next year, I think we'll be looking to get rid of Lingard, uh, Rojo, Jones. I heard recently that West Ham were in for Jones. Uh, Sergio Romero, I think he'll go because Romero is now our third choice goalkeeper. Maybe Daniel James could, and that could go next year. Maybe Lindelof could go next year. Maybe Fred could go next year. Uh, possibly Matic could go next year. Juan Mata could. Uh, Pogba, like I said, there's a good chance he could leave next summer. So there you go. Maybe even David De Gea could leave next summer. Maybe he won't, but he could do what I'm saying. I'm surprised we didn't offload Lingard, Jones, Rojo and Romero in the summer transfer window. I'm surprised you know that we didn't. Obviously, you know, we've been critical of the board anyway for several years, reflecting on how poor our recruitment policy's been and that. 
Uh, Woodward's been at the football club since 2012. You know, the Glazers have been at the football club since 2005 and that. Uh, Matt Judge, he's been at the club around seven seasons or so. A uh, bit of news regarding the director of football. Well, I updated you about it recently, didn't I? Uh, I think we've made our decision on who we want to hire in as our director of football, and that is Louis Campos. He's the Lil director, isn't he? Um, obviously, before I was at Lille, he was the Monaco director. Before I was at Monaco, he was uh, a scout at Real Madrid. To be honest with you, that's what I only know about him. I don't know more about him. But we've been in the process of trying to get a director of football in since like the Jose Mourinho era. And Woodward said quite a few times we've been in the process of trying to get one. It's one of the structural changes that we need at the club. And I said, if we are to get one in, we need someone who knows the club inside out and someone who's got the right philosophy and someone with, obviously, the experience. And uh, there was a few former Manchester United players linked with that director's role, wasn't there? So there you go. But obviously, you've got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer in his second full season as Manchester United manager. Obviously, he's managed nearly 100 games now as Man United manager, and he's won over 50. He's under contract with a football club until 2022, so he's got just under two years left on his current contract. Um, I said to you, didn't I, what would represent a good season for Man United, and that would be to finish in the top four and win a trophy, obviously. Um, obviously, last season was Solskjaer's first full season at the club, and... Did well last season, you know, he got us qualification for the Champions League, also got us third and guided us to three semi-finals, didn't he, did Solskjaer? So I credit him for that. Um, he's also spent over £200 million since he became Manchester United manager. He's brought around 10 senior players in. Uh, he's also brought a few academy players into the club. I like the way he's promoted the youth. Um, obviously we've seen a lot of players depart the club since he got recommended in as well so there's, you know there's definitely positive to take um, obviously we haven't won the Premier League since 2013 so the last time we won it was in Ferguson's last season um, we've only won four trophies since Ferguson retired and that was the FA Cup under Van Gaal and the Europa League and the League Cup and the Community Shield under the Jose Mourinho era but yeah, in the last seven years, we've had different managers with different philosophies. Um, obviously, we've recruited over over 30 players in since Ferguson's retirement. We've um, spent close to the billion pound range on them. You know what I mean? Like I said, um, I think in the entirety of our history, we've won a good 60-odd trophies. Uh, I think since the Ferguson era, we've won over 40 trophies, obviously. Uh, we actually you know won 38 trophies under Ferguson. Alex Ferguson enjoyed 27 years at Manchester United, like I said. Um, didn't settle in straight away, though, because he didn't win out in his first four years at the football club. So it does take some managers' time to settle in. But I don't think any manager at Man United or any manager in general will last as long as Ferguson or will replicate what Alex Ferguson did. You know what I mean? But, yeah... Uh, by the way, I should be on um, later on today after the game to give you my match reaction. I should be, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you saw one of the videos I did the other day. Um, I give you the news on Dennis Zakaria from Borussia Mönchengladbach. Uh, Christian Fark, who tends to be reliable, he said that Man United are interested in him. It says Chelsea and Bayern Munich have been interested in him. Liverpool have had a long-standing interest. Uh, probably will be allowed to leave next summer. Um, he's been out of an knee injury for Borussia Mönchengladbach since March. Uh, I think Borussia Mönchengladbach do want around £45 million for him. So he's the recent player who's on our agenda. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.